booktube, my name is Elizabeth and welcome to Book Babble. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I am going to call it Pass or Pick Up. And basically what I did was I read the Buzz Books Young Adult for Spring and Summer of 2016. And this is a book that I'm pretty sure almost anyone can get. You can download it on your computer or get it from NetGalley. Um, but it just gives little snippets of 20 books that are going to be coming out in the perspective seasons. They do a fall and winter version as well. And I read the spring and summer version and I figured I'd give you guys my thoughts on usually it's the first one or two chapters or it's like a 10 to 15 page snippet from the book or something like that so I will show you a picture of the cover here and I will give you the release date and the author and all the stuff that you need to know if you would like to add this to your TBR um, there are a couple books on here that I um, have heard of and reading the snippets have been have made me realize mm, maybe I don't want to read that book but let's go ahead and get started I hope this video gives you some good information on some of the popular books that are going to be coming out in the next couple of seasons the first book is called with malice by Eileen cook and I did write all of the information down on my little book here so if I'm looking down that's why it comes out on June 7th from HMH books and this is basically about a girl named Jill and she gets into a car accident when she is abroad um, for a school trip in Italy and um, she wakes up in the hospital and she does not even remember getting on the plane to Italy and this is a it's a young adult mystery thriller I believe um, more mystery than thriller and I am not um, it's contemporary it's set in modern day and I'm not a big fan of contemporary but I do like my mystery thrillers and this really brought me in in the first couple of chapters. I was, I really, really wanted to know where the story was going to go. And so for me, in my opinion, I would say that this is definitely a pick up book. It just seemed like there was so much suspense and um, drama to be had. I just needed to know where this book was going. The second book is Julia Vanishes. This is by Catherine Egan. And this comes out on June 7th from Knopf. It is a fantasy, and it is about a girl who um, can be not seen, but she doesn't become invisible. She just can, like, stand in a room and no one really notices her. And um, this is a fantasy, and I did not feel this book at all. I really felt like the language that the author was using was very... Um, I don't know. It's just It just didn't make sense for the story, and... Um, there wasn't really good world building and it was kind of like all over the place. I feel like if you want to read a story about a person who can turn unseen but not invisible where like they can stand in a room and just no one notices that they're there is, um, is Zeros by Scott Westerfeld. I read this at the end of 2015 and it was so, so good and one of the main characters in the story can literally be standing in a room and no one just, no, no one notices him. He's not invisible, he just is simply passed by all the time and it was a great, great book. Um, I would recommend zeros before um, Julia vanishes for sure. Next is Ivory and Bone by Julia Espa. This comes out June 14th from Harper Teen and this is a prehistoric fantasy romance and the scene starts off with um, a girl and a boy and you can tell that they are romantically involved in some way and um, she is hurt very badly and this of course is in the first chapter so it's not a spoiler but she asks him to tell her a story and he says I'll tell you the story the first time that I met you and um, it's set in prehistoric times so these um, it's he is part of a clan and um, he is like the oldest son of the clan leader and then a different clan from far away comes in and and she is a part of that clan and they hunt mammoths together and it was just a really really cool story I feel like when I read the synopsis of this I wasn't convinced at all but reading it it was just super super good and reading something that is a prehistoric book I was really sold I just have never read anything like that in the young adult genre um, there is a book called transcendence that is a prehistoric set which is really really good as well but that's an adult romance um, but this is it drew me in I loved it I cannot wait to read the rest of it this is definitely a pickup the next book is Rubble of the Sands, which is by Ellen Hamilton. It comes out on March 6th from Penguin. This is about a girl named Amani, and she enters into a 
uh, basically like a gun shooting contest um, to win enough money to kind of get out of the desert town where she is from. And this book has been advertised as like, from what I'm feeling, like a desert Middle Eastern um, genies type book. Really like um, The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. I was kind of feeling they were very similar um, settings and types of books. But when I read this, it, I'm just not getting that. With the guns and the saloons, it really feels like an American desert western book and not like an Arabian Nights type Middle Eastern desert feel. Um, so I would recommend this be a pass, especially if you're really, really wanting that desert Middle Eastern genie feel. Um, for me, I'm probably still going to pick it up just because I'm... I really am interested in the big hyped books, um, so I'm probably going to check it out, but if you're kind of bummed out that it's not, you really don't get that magical Arabian Nights type feel from this, I really didn't, then I would pass because I think you might be disappointed like I was, but I'm still going to pick it up like I said because of the hype. Next is My Lady Jane. This is by Cynthia Hand, Brandy, or Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This comes out June 7th from Harper Teen. And this, um, if you're not familiar, um, Lady Jane Grey was the, um, was a queen for nine days before she was beheaded by Mary, um, by Bloody Mary, um, who is the daughter of King Henry VIII. So this is all in, um, like, pre-Elizabethan England. So this book tells the story of Lady Jane Grey, but it is very much not historically correct. And at first I was super upset about that. But then you read it and it is awesome. It is told in a Princess Bride type style. Super funny. Um, instead of using different aspects of like religion, which was huge in that era, they were the Catholics and the Protestants were really at war with each other. Um, instead of doing that, she says that, um, you know, different people can shapeshift in different animals and it's just very funny and humorous and I just, I loved it. For someone who is so committed to a historical fiction being historically correct and loving this anyway, it's just great. I'm definitely going to pick this up. I cannot wait to read the rest of the story. It was probably my favorite of the entire um, 20 novels that are in this book. Next is Girl in the Blue Coat. This is by Monica Hesse, and it comes out April 5th from Little Brown. And this is about a girl who was living in Nazi-occupied Germany um, during World War II, and she is a black marketeer. She looks for and finds items for people like, um, you know, chocolate and bread and just things that are not abundant during this war turn Born Europe and um, one of her customers comes to her and says I need you to find a person and she says well I don't find people I find goods and she says um, her customer says well she's a Jew and I need you to find her before the Nazis do and um, that's basically where the little snippet ended but from the piece that I got from this book I'm 50-50 I liked it enough. I don't know if I'm committed enough to pick up the book and read it, but this was really good. If you guys are fans of historical fictions, especially World War II, um, if you liked The Book Thief or any of those other World War II type young adult novels, I would definitely pick this up. Like I said, I'm 50-50. It depends on how busy or how much I'm reading at the time, but I'm probably going to pick this one up. Then is The Progeny by Tosca Lee. This comes out on May 24th from Howard Books and this is a urban um, paranormal fantasy and it is about this girl Emily and she is descended from the um, first female serial killer and the, these gr this group of people the secret society is set out on killing or destroying every single one of um, Elizabeth the Thori, I guess that's the name of the serial killer, killing every single one of her descendants. And, um, first off, I'm not a big fan of urban fantasy or paranormal fantasy at all. Um, so this book already got off on the wrong foot for me personally, but I didn't like the story. I didn't like the world building. There wasn't really much of it. I was really confused the whole time. Um, it might just be me because I don't like urban or paranormal fantasy at all. Um, they're probably like my least favorite genres, but I just wasn't sold on this one. In my opinion, I would say this is a pass, um, but if you're a big fan of urban or paranormal fantasies, maybe you could pick this up. It just definitely wasn't for me. Um, yeah, I'm not going to read that one. 
Next is You Know Me Well. This is by Nita LaCour and David Levithan, and it comes out on J June 7th from St. Martin's Griffin. And this is about Mark and Kate, and they have sat next to each other in Calc all year in um, school, and they never talk, they're not friends, they don't have the same circles or anything like that, but one day, Kate sees Mark at a gay bar on the first day of Pride Week, and their paths kind of align from there, and they're both having relationship issues. Mark is in love with his best friend, and Katie is... Um, being set up by one of her friends with apparently the girl of her dreams and so I think they I'm not really sure what happens after that because it's where the thing ended but they get together they become friends and I'm hoping that they solve their relationship issues um now for me I'm not a big fan of contemporary but I, I did like this one if you love love your contemporary I don't think David Levithan is never a bad choice when it comes to contemporary. There were a couple of David Levithan books that I've read and I've enjoyed. Um, like again, I'm 50-50 on this one. I'm probably gonna pass it just because I have way too many other fantasies and historical fictions that I read above contemporary. Then I have The Outliers by Kimberly McCright and this comes out May 3rd from HarperCollins. It is a young adult mystery contemporary and um, basically what happens is that Wiley, Wiley gets a text from her um, best friend Cassie saying that she needs, she's in desperate need of help and Cassie's ex-boyfriend Jasper goes to help Wiley and they are getting all these cryptic texts and these clues and they're trying to figure out what's wrong with Cassie and you know all of these things and I'm mean, she's in some sort of trouble I and mean, the, the snippet for this book was that very long so I did not get a good feel of this but it did leave me hanging I really wanted to know what was coming next um, so again this is probably going to highly depend on what I'm reading at the time but I think this is good to pick up especially if you're in the mood for that good mystery feel this felt like it was going to have a really nice good twist at the end then I have The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead from Razorbill. This is coming out April 5th. And this is a young adult fantasy about Adelaide, who is a countess, and her grandmother is um, arranging a marriage to her awful, awful cousin. And um, then, so she runs away and is... So she runs away and plays the part of a commoner, and all commoners need to enter into the glittering court, which helps them get good marriages or get a good business deal or something to that effect. And I didn't, there wasn't much into the story for this book either, but what I did read was really good. Rochelle Mead is an amazing storyteller. She has great writing, um, great pacing, and um, she builds up the world just enough where you understand it, but it's not weighing you down. This is definitely a pick. Up. Then I've got Unrivaled by Allison Noel, which comes out on May 10th from Catherine Teigen Books. And this is about L Layla? Lila? I don't know. This is about Layla, and she is a writer for like a gossip column in California, and she writes about um, famous people and actors and actresses and stuff like that. And she really wants to get out of that scene and she wants to write about drug use in LA and, and stuff like that. Um, this just seemed really superficial to me. And, um, you know, all the main, the, all she really talked about was, you know, bodies and how people looked and what people think of you. And, um, it's basically surrounding this mystery of Madison Brooks, who is a model, and she goes missing, and um, it just doesn't seem like it has that much depth for me. Again, I have a negative connotation when it comes to contemporary. I'm not a big fan, and this just seemed really shallow and um, not my type of book. So in my opinion, I would say pass. Even if you are a contemporary fan, this just did not seem like the best of the best at all. Then I have Every Exquisite Thing by Matthew Quick, and this is about a girl, Nanette, who receives a gift from one of her teachers, and it is like an out-of-print cult classic, and it basically changes her life. Um, she goes on a journey to find the author, and um, it again, this didn't really give me a good snippet into the real 
bulk of the plot but what I did read this was really interesting and it's a contemporary which is you know like I said very slim that I enjoy contemporaries but this one was really good and I'm definitely going to pick it up and I don't know if I mentioned it comes out on May 10th from Little Brown. Then I have This Savage Song, which is by V.A. Schwab, and it comes out June 7th from Green Willow Books. And this is a paranormal urban fantasy, and like I said, for the other paranormal urban fantasies, it's just not my thing. Um, but this is a this is about Verity, which is a city overrun by monsters. In the north, Callum Harker rules the monsters, and any human being who pays for safety is not eaten. And in the south... Henry Flynn hunts the monsters who cross into his border into the south and the story follows August and Kate as they try to foster peace in between between the north and the south and the uh, monsters and people and um I wasn't sold on this either I know V. Schwab is like a hugely popular author and I this is the only book that I've read from her this is the only thing that I've ever read from her um but I just wasn't a fan it just wasn't for me, and I don't know if it's because it's an urban fantasy, or I just wasn't really sold on the world. It just was really confusing and choppy and had lots going on that I just couldn't follow, especially in this short snippet of the book that I got. I would not want to read an entire book like this. This just wasn't for me. It is a pass, but if you're a fan of Vee Schwab and you're obsessed with her books and love her books, then I would go ahead and read it. Um, it's not the most horrible thing ever, but it definitely has the urban and um paranormal type of book against it against it for me in my opinion because i don't like those types of books then i have the crowns game this is by evelyn sky and it comes out may 17th from balzer and bray and it is a historical fantasy slash historical fiction about Vi vika and nikolai and they're both fighting to become russia's imperial enchanter and this was super super good grabbed me in from the very very beginning had the perfect amount of world building and i knew exactly what was going on in the world and it was so visual i could you know it was so beautifully written i could visualize everything that was going on this was probably another one of my favorites in the entire um book that i read it's just really really good highly highly anticipating this one i'm definitely going to pick it up next is the raven king by maggie steve this comes out april 26th and i was not able to read this because i have not read the rest of the raven cycle um i have the first book somewhere over here I don't know where it is, but I have the first one and I need to get on it, but I didn't want to read it because I didn't want to spoil myself for the series. It is like the fourth and last book in the whole series, so I just didn't even bother reading it. The next is The Darkest Corners by Kara Thomas. This is coming out on April 19th from Delacorte. And this is about Tessa, who returns to Pennsylvania after 10 years. Um, she is vis visiting her dying father. Her father is dying of pancreas cancer in jail, and he is in jail because he did, like, this um, uh, convenience store robbery. She left Pennsylvania 10 years previous um, for a combination of reasons, her father going to jail, and because her and one of her childhood best friends helped put away a mass murderer or something like that. And um, the snippet of the book that I got, that I read, was mostly about her visiting her dying father and not really about the main plot point mystery of this. But of what I did read, it had really good writing and it just seemed really interesting and I really wanted to know it had like all this suspense surrounding it about what happened how did they how were they involved in this guy and putting him in jail for murdering all these people and I really wanted to know what was going on so I would definitely say that this is a pick up because it just the first couple of chapters were so good and I really want to know what happens next then it's Beware That Girl by Teresa Totten comes out May 31st from Double Day Canada and this is a young adult psychological thriller and this is about a girl named Katie and she is in a private school on scholarship and she's she's quote unquote trying to get into Yale um but I it was really confusing what the problem was in this story because I guess she was trying to become friends with like the it girls of the school and um it it seemed like there was something going on that she needed to lie about or like she had to be 
she had to deceive these people so that she could get into Yale. It was just really confusing and I didn't understand what the point was of becoming friends with the It Girls so that she could get into Yale. It was like, it was like the end goal was to get into Yale but she had to do all these weird things to do it and it didn't really make sense to me. So I would say that this is a pass um, just because I didn't understand the plot. The description was really vague and then the first couple of chapters didn't really move the story along either um so yeah i would pass on this one but again with all of these books i've only read the first two chapters so it just depends on what your preferences are as well next is siren song this is by mary weber and this comes out march 1st from harper collins and this is about sirens which is really all i can tell you the description is really confusing the first two chapters were uneventful and had really bad world building um if you want to read a siren book i would recommend the the siren by kira cass which just came out a couple of weeks ago I recently got finished reading this the other day and it was much, 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 much better than this book. Um, but yeah, I didn't like the way that it was written, I didn't like the way that the world was built, I just didn't like anything about it at all. I actually stopped reading it after like 50% of the snippet and if I can't even get through a small snippet of a book, there is no way that I'm going to pick it up. So this is definitely a pass. Next is Highly Illogical Behavior by John Corey Whaley, and this is being published by Dial, and it comes out on... Oh no, I didn't write a release date. I'll put it down here or something like that. But this is about a, uh, this is about a Solomon who has not left his house for three years, and he is 16 years old, and he is suffering from agoraphobia because when he was in middle school, he would have panic attacks like three or four times a day, so he decided to become homeschooled and um, just not leave the house at all, and this was really, really good. One of his previous classmates finds out that he didn't like I guess everyone at school assumed that he moved and so one of his old classmates found found out that he didn't move and he was still living in town and decided that she wants to fix him so that's really where the story ended but from what I read this was really really good Be written written beautifully and I cannot wait to pick it up but definitely a pickup Next is And I Darken. This is by Kirsten White, and this comes out June 28th from Delacorte. This is a fantasy slash historical fiction. It is set in uh, 15th century Romania, and it is about Vlad the Impaler and his family and how he takes over his area of Romania or something like that. Really, 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 really good. I cannot wait to read the rest of the story. This is definitely a pickup. Um, I just, I don't, I wasn't sold on this when I read the description. I actually was not looking forward to reading the snippet when I read the description, but it's written amazingly and it just flows really, really well. I'm excited to pick this one up. I definitely, definitely recommend this one. So I think this cover is absolutely hideous. I don't think it goes with the feel of this story at all all but this is definitely something that i think any fantasy lover will absolutely enjoy cannot wait to pick this one up so that's basically it for all of the books i hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you it gave you a little bit of insight into some of the books that are going to be coming out in the next couple of seasons let me know which books of these you're excited about reading after i talked about them or which ones you're absolutely not going to read and i will see you guys in the next one bye